what you need to know about COP27. Since 1995, the United Nations has organized an annual conference for nearly 200 countries to talk about the climate crisis. Delegates and ministers from these countries have butted heads to find ways to cut emissions and adapt to a warming planet. So what is it that delegates will talk about at the beach resort town of Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt this November? Get ready for some jargon. First, loss and damage. Under the Paris Agreement signed in 2015, rich countries promised to pay for losses and damages caused in poor countries by climate change. However, until now, countries have not discussed who will pay, how much they will pay, and how that money would be transferred. With a third of Pakistan underwater only a few months ago, the debate around loss and damage is expected to be a hot one at COP27. Second, what does Africa need? This will only be the fifth time a COP meeting has happened in Africa. As the continent that has contributed the least to climate change, but is suffering its worst impacts, there will be a much needed focus on Africa's needs. Those needs will be met through financial grants, technology partnerships, and bilateral deals. Expect lots of announcements that will be called Memorandum of Understanding. Third, is private capital moving as expected? Even though COP meetings have been traditionally about government officials meeting their counterparts, private companies have been playing a bigger and bigger role. That's because moving the world to reach net zero emissions within decades will require as much as $4 trillion of investments every year. The vast majority of that money will come from private players. At COP26 in Glasgow last year, the world's biggest financial institutions with more than $150 trillion of assets under management committed to moving their capital toward the goal of reaching net zero emissions by 2050. At COP27, there will be a big focus on finding out how they are progressing.